So is this the codex where orc stompers get genuinely dangerous? Let's talk about the great big effigy of Gork and the rather insane shooting numbers it can put out in the Dread Mob. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking orcs once more and in this video I thought we'd focus on the stomper itself, a giant great big clanking war machine covered in guns and with a ridiculous sized chainsaw that in the past has sort of been iconic for being just kind of terrible and rules pretty much permanently though now genuinely it looks like they could be somewhat scary. In the video let's talk about the model briefly, then go through the datasheet and all the fun damage combos that you can put on it, mainly focusing on the dread mob. I was quite looking forward to looking through the damage numbers for this thing and they don't really disappoint too much in my opinion. Focusing on the model first, the Stomper is a huge and stompy war machine, a great big armoured hull of a walker that's like a mini gargant, it's basically the orky version of a light titan, far towering over night class things. Stompers generally arise from the scrapyards as big products for ambitious mechs, towering over the wire below them and blazing away with all manner of hilariously scary weapons, gatling cannons of terrifying proportions, accompanied by rockets and a mighty death cannon. You don't want to be stepped on by one of these things, and the mega choppers and claws they can possess can tear through things of their equivalent stature. Kit-wise, the Stomper is kind of a unique one for Games Workshop. It first got launched in the first edition of Apocalypse, and featured in some fairly cataclysmic sized battle reports and White Dwarf at the time. They had entire mobs of these things squaring off against the Imperium. The kit itself is at least a somewhat old one, but it's really quite interesting just for its sheer scale. It's £85, €110, Euros, or $140 from Games Workshop, and despite being quite significantly cheaper than something like an Imperial Knight, it's far bigger than them. I believe the single biggest plastic kit that Games Workshop makes right now, and does cost quite a lot of points in game, 800 at the moment, making it one of the best investments for Orcs if you want to get points on the table for cheap. At that sort of size of model though, it can be a bit game warping, they often tend to be really quite bad in the rules when you're paying that sort of points for a miniature, and the Stomp has generally been a model for more fun casual games more so than anything else, a cool and rather spectacular centrepiece to a collection. It's kind of notable for the 10th edition Orc Codex featuring it in that Stomper Boys Orc Battle Force set, though part of course Games Workshop really doesn't seem to have made too many of them, it seemed like they sold out depressingly quickly in the UK at least, most discount retailers not having very many at all either. I'm not really expecting it to do much better in the USA, which it hasn't gone live at from Games Workshop's web store at time of recording, but I guess you never know. Looks like there's still at least a bit of stock in the Games Workshop Australian web store, though I guess it might not be there for all that long. Always annoying when Games Workshop teases us with big box sets and then doesn't make enough for everyone who wants one to have one. Typically it's sold as a direct only Games Workshop order, so you don't normally tend to see it in hobby stores and things. It does mean that there's limited or no chance for discount on it, if you do have to go direct web store only. The model itself though I think does the job. Maybe the absolute most modern fine plastic details aren't the biggest deal when it comes to an enormous kit like this. It does have all sorts of fun things all over it, a few different ways to assemble it, a captain directing the stomper from the crow's nest above the head of the thing, and grot riggers running all over it banging things with hammers. Definitely a fairly enormous hobby project if you get one, though I imagine it's really quite fun putting together an orky walking dustbin like this. Looking at its datasheet from Codex Orcs, and the Stomper was 800 points pre-Codex, generally seen as kind of the epitome of not very competitive at that cost for how much damage it did, though as mentioned I feel like it's going to be spectacularly better if you pair it with the Dread Mob detachment, which you absolutely should do if you're taking one. Rules wise, it's a titanic towering walker, which means that if you nose into terrain then you can see over it, towering isn't quite as impactful as it used to be. Moves 10 inches up the board, which can be a little bit slower than you might expect due to its absolutely enormous hull. It might struggle to move between gaps in certain ruins and things, and 10 inches might not necessarily be all that far to skirt terrain with that kind of profile. It's got Deadly Demise 2d6, so if it blows up and you roll that 6, it goes up in style. You don't really want this blowing up in the heart of your orc army. Could potentially be a game losing thing right there if it gets taken out too early and takes down the rest of your army with it. And if it does tow onto an objective, then it gets objective control 12, so that point's probably yours, and it does have better than normal leadership for an orc at leadership 6. Getting onto the big numbers though, the Stomper does have some big numbers for characteristics, as you'd expect for 800 points, it's toughness 14, so things like las cannons will be wounding it on a 5+, plus, a 2+, plus save that you'd usually be able to get cover at range with, so hopefully most higher AP things you'd still save on a 4+, plus, and a big 30 wounds. It does have a 6 plus invulnerable save like the rest of the orc vehicles, but I feel like that one's not really quite as relevant on 2 plus save things, 
you'd need some very, very high AP things to actually trigger that. The numbers definitely sound impressive, but for 800 points it isn't actually all that standout tough in its own right, at least not compared with the equivalent amount of battle tanks or things you could get for other factions. It is unusually good against things like strength 12 las cannons, but maybe not quite as tough per point against things like melter or big strength 14 or higher damage weapons like gladiator lancers or Tau Railguns and things, and also anything with either Devastating Wounds or Mortal Wounds will be really quite efficient against it. Each wound lost is sort of the equivalent of 27 points, so you're going to get some very very efficient damage if you can touch it with those. With these big super heavy things though, often even an entire enemy army might struggle to take it down in any one turn, and it could mean that you could basically tank a bit of damage for at least a turn or so. But you really don't want it just getting absolutely fried by an anti-tank unit right from the start of the game, otherwise you're going to waste your stomper. Moving on to perhaps even more ridiculous numbers though, and we've got the Mega Chopper. Both profiles are kind of hilarious, perhaps particularly the Strike one where it gets 6 attacks at Strength 24, AP 5 and Damage 10. A pretty reasonable chance to one round at any hard target in melee there. Or it can swap out for a sweep which has got a good anti-terminator style profile. 18 attacks at strength 10, AP 2, damage 3, should easily make some short work of some infantry. Without any further buffs to its melee, it isn't really all that great against hordes, around about 10 slain termagants. It kills around about 7 standard space marines, or 5 terminators on average, being quite good against them. Against heavy tanks and vehicles though, it does 33 wounds to a rhino, or 33 wounds to a land raider on average, obviously dispensed in multiples of 10 there. Kind of funny that the AP5 and Strength24 doesn't care about the 2 at all. You average up between 1 and 2 failed saves against anything with a 4 plus invulnerable though, which could be very swingy. If your opponent rolls hot then it could be punishing, and spending a command point reroll with a chance to bounce one of these could be big. If it really is going to struggle killing anything in close combat though, you could easily spend 1 CP for tank shock. That's going to be about as close to guaranteeing the 6 mortal wounds as you can ever get, and it could be well worth it if you're fighting something with some very good invulnerable saves or if you're fighting a horde and you just don't have the volume of attacks to take them all down. Basically in melee though, it's a massive threat, there's a good chance it kills what it touches. It's perhaps range that's more interesting though in the new Orc Codex, the Stomper doesn't really get any real options, just comes with the guns that it gets given to it. Basically three primary weapons and then a bunch of backup things. For more incidental backup guns, it has three big shooters, a twin big shooter and a scorcher. The big guns are quite exciting though, though do hit on the very orky ballistic skill 5 plus if you don't have buffs. The death cannons may be the main event, 3d6 shots at 72 inches, at strength 14, AP3 and damage d6, a nice anti-tank profile there. On average rolling you could usually expect around about 3 or 4 hits out of it. The super rockets it gets have d6 shots at strength 12, AP3 and a big damage d6 plus 2, a bit more wildfire and all or nothing, but the damage is big if the enemy does fail a save. And then the Super Gatler is the one for clearing out infantry, 24 inch range, strength 7, AP minus 1 and damage 2 and it gets sustained hits 1, so on average you're hitting with around about 10 of those shots. Still for a bit of baseline range damage, even with Ballistic Skill 5+, plus, the Stomper's just not something that you can dismiss, here's its firepower just within 24 inch range, killing around about a squad or so worth of termagants, around about 7 space marines or 3 terminators, or doing around about 14 wounds to a Rhino or 10 wounds to a Land Raider on average, though bear in mind that all of them are really quite swingy, random numbers of shots plus a D6 damage characteristic and hitting on 5s means that you could go absolutely wild or do next to nothing. These are also the numbers if you just pile all 3 guns into the same target as well, in reality it is going to be more efficient to split the Super Gatlo against some infantry, and then hopefully fire the big guns against some tanks or maybe some heavy infantry if not. But either way, I feel like the numbers are enough to give you a good chance of mauling something important, but believe me, they can get better. Finally though, just to round out the datasheet, it does have a bunch of special rules. It can carry 22 models as transport capacity, including Gasgore for 18 slots if you want. Certainly not all for if it was going to go adventuring up the board and take a big mob of boys or something else scary inside it. I feel like using this as a transport sometimes could make sense pretty much using its already tanky profile to make sure that something scary can get the first charge. Ideally you wouldn't want competing priorities with it though. Say you want to move it forward as a transport when in reality it makes more sense for it to perhaps hang back a turn and not just walk straight into the enemy's nastiest anti-tank unit to kill. And ideally you wouldn't want anything inside it getting in the way of the stomper itself doing some charging as obviously its damage profile is ridiculous. 
Might genuinely not be the worst thing in the world to have a sort of cheap infantry squad or something like that, though. They could get out and handle some grunts if it made sense to, or score some objectives. Otherwise, it's got a war effigy for an aura of plus one to battle shocks. That means the Stomper itself is very unlikely to fail. And in general, it's handy enough to have. It will come up from time to time, though I'm not exactly build around it. It's got a fairly standard super heavy rule in stomping forward. It means that you can move over enemies beside titanic models and move over terrain features that are less than 4 inches in height as if they weren't there. The enemies thing might occasionally be helpful if you're directly screened by a very thin line of infantry. Most of the time though you're not going to be able to get its big base to clear the other side of the enemy unit so I feel like that might only be sort of peripherally coming up. The terrain thing really depends on the table. If there are lots of pieces that are less than that height it could genuinely help the manoeuvrability of the thing but plenty of ruins tend to be taller than that. Finally, it does have a degrading profile, which is genuinely a problem at 10 wounds or less. It does cut its shooting damage output to a fairly big degree. It's going to swap to being a bit more relevant in melee at that point, if it is on the brink of going down. Overall though, putting that all together, the Stomper does have some positives. It could be too tough for certain armies to reliably kill if they didn't bring some fairly enormous anti-tank, and you can get cover super easy on the toughness 14 and a 2 plus save. Literally anything that can give you boosts to an 800 points model unit is going to be massive, particularly stratagems and particularly from Dread Mob. It's got some great synergy with the standard mech as we'll get onto. Its damage output is good enough to one round most enemies in melee that it can catch, tank shock being a nice possibility if you want it. And its bonus special rules could be helpful somewhere between the transport, battle shock and moving over terrain thing. They all could come up but might be a little bit more peripheral. Being the cheapest way to get points into an orky army isn't the worst thing either. It's got a higher points per the money spent, even if you're not getting it at discount compared with any other kit. For all the positives though, it does absolutely have some big negatives that can be kind of crippling for it. Its enormous profile might be borderline unplayable on some cramped boards if you've got fixed terrain. And even if not, you might practically have some problems moving around terrain and catching the things it most wants to. Its range damage really isn't that great for 800 points and hitting on a 5 plus is very weak to any sort of minus 1 to hit modifier such as stealth. And just overall, despite having some fairly apocalyptic melee, unless it can actually catch something that's really meaningful, then it might just struggle to do enough damage or really be all that durable as well for the 800 point investment, at least compared with the amount of scary orcs that you could have in its place. With that being the case, there's a chance it might just get ignored by the enemy army and they just go after literally everything else and try and win the mission while the Stomper tries to solo the entire enemy army but only able to engage certain things at a time. It definitely does have some challenges but let's get to the good stuff though. If you take your Stomper, I'd consider a mech absolutely auto include. 45 points pre-codex and the datasheet didn't take any changes. He's a small support character that can either lead a nearby mob or perhaps more likely just go lone operative and stand next to the vehicles. He casually gives the Stomper a plus one to hit, which is just immense on 800 points worth of model. It's certainly not bad in melee, though it's far more significant in the shooting phase, basically giving you plus 50% to your damage output then and there, maybe technically a little less given that the Gatler's power often comes from the sustained hits. As if that weren't auto-include enough, the D3 restored wounds can help a little. Might often not necessarily be the difference between it living and dying, but on a sort of theory hammer level, you're basically restoring 54 points worth of stomper to the board on average each time it's used, and that does cost more than the mech. When you can have that sort of thing happening in a single turn, never mind anything the mech achieves by himself, he does sort of seem doubly auto-include, and you definitely want to have one around if you've got a stomper. Likely he wants to lurk alongside it, get within 3 inches to provide that buff, and then advance to keep up with it as it goes stomping towards the enemy. The mech definitely adds a massive amount of strength, but getting to the really fun stuff, we have the Dread Mob. Basically, if you're taking a Stomper and Army list, this is probably the detachment for you, as they're just so much better here than elsewhere. The core rule is another enormous damage boost to the vehicle, using Tridat Button. That gives you either sustained hits, lethal hits, or critical wounds, getting AP-2 better. After the three for the Stomper, I'd argue that the sustained hits one is probably the best out of them, that's effectively again a 50% damage increase on the anti-armor guns, though it does have the downside of doing nothing for the Super Gatler. Typically if you were to choose though, I'd still say that's likely going to be the best, otherwise lethal hits is alright. With Orky Ballistic Skill 5+, plus, it would be effectively a 25% damage boost against anything you are wounding on a 3, though it does help the Gatler out quite a lot against things that it was wounding on a 5+, plus, particularly as each 6 would be sustained and lethal. 
Finally, the critical wounds getting AP minus two better is all right, though I'd say it's by far the weakest of the three. Maybe against things like a two plus saving cover, it gets a little bit better. Though in general, it's always going to be kind of niche, as the majority of wounds that you get with these weapons aren't going to be critical ones, so it's only going to come up on a small amount of your many shots. I guess then the question is whether or not you go for Hazardous and choose your favourite one of these, or just embrace the random and trust Gork and Mork to choose your fate. Depending on the exact turn or target, it might make a little bit more difference to you. Though I feel like from my first take I'd say that Hazardous is almost certainly going to be worth it to guarantee the sustained hits if you're shooting against something like armour or heavy infantry, just to get the maximum amount of damage out of your true anti-tank weapons. I would probably say though that if you're doing that, it means that the shooters and the scorcher just aren't worth firing at all, unless you're going just for sheer maximal orky carnage, which is kind of fine enough really. I'm fairly sure that taking another like five hazardous rolls on your big expensive orky mech is probably not going to be worth it for the damage that those shooters and scorchers will do, though I guess it might depend on the situation. If the thing that you need to do to win the game is clear out a whole ton of enemy infantry up close, then it could be worth the price. Still though, even if you did choose to use the Stomper and not fire the additional guns, then you're still likely to take some damage from Hazardous quite regularly. You draw three Hazardous checks, taking three Mortal Wounds on a 1. On average, that's between 1 or 2 Mortal Wounds per turn overall, often getting none but having a small chance to get excessive amounts. In Theory World, again, that means that you're killing around about 40 points worth of Stomper to trigger the ability, but given that you're giving the Firepower such a massive buff, I think it's generally going to be worth it. In reality, part of the decision could be how much life the Stomper has left, can you afford to take hazardous rolls, or do you have any CP left to re-roll them? And realistically, at this point in the game, will the opponent kill the Stomper? If they're very unlikely to, then it might not be worth being too precious about taking a few mortal wounds on the thing. If you add a mech into the mix, go hazardous and take sustained hits, just firing the three primary guns to reduce a bit of hazardous checks, then these are the numbers that you can expect. On average, you get around about two hits for every three flung at the enemy. You'd kill around about 20 horde models, around about 10 space marines or five terminators now, up to 25 wounds worth of lighter vehicles, or 18 wounds worth of land raider. It does seem that if you're focusing fire, you could have a pretty reasonable chance to take out big heavy tanks, though I would bear in mind that I've assumed no cover for this calculation. If the opponent's got cover or armor of contempt, the numbers aren't going to look this standout. Again, as before, you may as well still be firing the Super Gatlot off into infantry as well. It's going to do the majority of the work against those lighter targets, and then leave the heavy guns that can do the majority of those numbers against the heavier ones as well. Then though, to take the Stomper from good to great, you can add in these stratagems. I was kind of surprised that these ones were just absolutely fine to use on Titanic vehicles. Games Workshop often tend to be a little bit cautious about that kind of thing. But the Stomper does have two absolutely huge damage buffs that are roughly equivalent, and what's more, you can even use them both at the same time. Daka 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 can give you reroll hit rolls of 1. It might be borderline worth it already with the sort of damage output that comes out of the Stomper. But realistically, you'd want to push it to gain full reroll hits plus hazardous on the weapons. So you will be taking the test on a 1 or 2 now. That means you'd be hitting on a 4 plus with the mech, rerolling any fails and sustained hits on 6s. That does average as many hits as you have shots. So an average of 20 hits out of your Super Gatler or around about 10-ish hits out of the Death Cannon. Scary, scary stuff there. The other option is the anti-armor one. One command point for bigger shells for bigger gits. All very good orky logic there. Plus one to wound monsters and vehicles at long range. And for this one, you can push it again and gain hazardous, and that gets your weapons an extra plus one damage. Really quite meaningful on the super gap the shots it might be chipping in. And between both of the damage increases here, you have a very shooty stomper indeed. If you are going with the version that's just firing the three guns and not blazing away with all the small arms, I think it's more than reasonable to push it on both of these. I feel like you're overall gaining more than you're losing. You'd roll 3d6 on those hazardous checks, typically fail one for three mortal wounds, though there is at least some chance that you might take more. Let's add those numbers into the big stomper damage chart then. And first up, this is the same stomper with the mech and sustained hits, and then adding in daka 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 on top of that for the hit rerolls. Now with that shooting, you're up to 30 dead termagants, around about 16 dead space marines, so definitely want to be splitting fire in a big way there. In theory, it's around about 8 slain terminators, 40 odd wounds to most normal sized vehicles, and a big 27 wounds to a land raider. So if you focus fire with the guns on that, it's pretty likely to be one-shotted, and a good chance of doing so even if it's got cover. 
If you are really looking to take down vehicles though, it looks like the bigger shells one is slightly more efficient than Daka Daka against those hard targets. Realistically, there's not that much in it, and you might just want the Daka Daka one just for reliability. But with the plus one to wound and plus one damage, you do actually outshoot that on average just in raw wounds. 42 wounds against your lighter vehicle or 31 against a land raider. Again, realistically, you definitely want to be splitting fire and handing out some big chunks of that to multiple different units unless your opponent does have something that's really worthy of all that focused damage. Finally though, for ultimate taking stompers to the max, you can use both strats against monsters or vehicles. A big 2 CP for this, but I feel like it gives you suitably apocalyptic damage output for the damage table to catch fire here. Usually that's going to be around about 10 death cannon hits that wound on a 2 plus with AP 3 and damage D6. Never mind all these spam damage 3 with a super gatler on a 3. And those scary super rockets with their even bigger damage characteristic. Even the death cannon actually gets D6 plus 1 because you get the plus 1 damage from the bigger shell stratagem. Overall that's around about 63 wounds worth of damage to lighter vehicles. Probably overkill realistically. Around about 40 wounds or so to something like a land raider. That does feel like it's the sort of damage output that could threaten to one round something like an enemy imperial knight with rotated ion shields. A lot of the damage output of this isn't necessarily all that AP dependent. It's just to making the enemy roll absolutely tons of saves. You certainly do need to be doing some fairly massive damage for an 800 point model. But I feel like just this in the shooting phase is kind of cataclysmic. Never mind the fact that you can chase it down with strength 24 damage 10 melee. Which usually ranged units like this can't do. Moving on from huge damage combos. I thought it was just worth briefly talking through the other support for the units. The wire I feel could help him a little bit. The advance and charge could be used to get to melee, but you would give up a serious amount of shooting unless you spend the stratagem for it in Dread Mob that we'll get onto. The plus one strength usually isn't going to be relevant, though the plus one attack is fairly big when they're damaged 10 apiece if he's actually going to struggle to kill whatever he catches. The invulnerable save maybe isn't the biggest deal in the world, but I suppose helps him out against things like Melter with AP4. In general, I feel like the best value stratagems you're going to get out of him are the big shooting ones. There is definitely a vessel that you can just pour all of your CP into if you want to. Provided you're not just going to wipe out whatever it was in melee, tank shock for usually 6 mortal wounds is never a bad deal. And command point rerolls are going to be huge on the stomper, even things just like rerolling a failed save on a 4 plus save perhaps. And maybe more so than anything else, if he fails his charge unexpectedly, that's going to be the difference between a huge amount of melee damage or none. You could also do it for the number of shots on the death cannon maybe, if that happened to whiff super hard. Otherwise for detachment synergy, you can put any manner of scary orc melee in the transport pretty much. I'm not going to go into that too much detail here. Gaskell himself could use Makari in the war to give him lethal hits in melee, though I think it's a bit irrelevant as he wounds on a 2+. Plus. And in theory he could use a burner bomber to strip cover from his target that he wants to shoot. Unfortunately it's kind of awful and clunky to line up, which maybe is a bit of a shame as all that scary Dakar would very much like ignores cover. Finally, to round it out, there's a few more detachment things. As if that weren't enough for the Dread Mob, it will be able to buff melee as well, such as sustained hits on that brutal melee claw. And besides the stratagems that I mentioned, there's a very good one for advance and shoot and re rolling the advance rolls. That's relevant if you needed line of sight on something key with all that enormous firepower, and doubly relevant in the war if you could also charge after that. When you do go aggressive, it means that you could move extra far to gain lines of sight, and then also double down with a charge at no compromise to your shooting. Most of the other detachments don't really have anything too stomper specific. I guess you could transport some relevant units, but beyond that, it's just going to be going by datasheet strength. The only other one that's really relevant is Warhorde. Getting sustained hits in melee is never a bad thing for this kind of profile. And for stratagem support, you could have critical hits on a 5 plus to make that melee even stronger. And if you did happen to have a CP3 when it blew up and you rolled a 6 for its explosion, Kareen could be kind of spectacular to stagger towards the enemy before dousing them in mortal wounds. Realistically though, a stomper in war horde doesn't really hold a candle to a stomper in dread mob. Overall, despite a very scary shooting profile when it's maximally buffed, it still has big issues. I still say it's just kind of bad outside of dread mob unless it winds up getting a major points cut. Maybe that sort of thing does exemplify the problem with 10th Detachments. It can't really afford to have a fair cost for other detachments just because of how much crazy power it gains in Dread Mob versus the rest. Otherwise, as mentioned, terrain on preset boards is a big issue. It might keep it almost useless in some tournaments if it can't move around or gain lines of sight. 
Certain units still could kill it depressingly quickly, long-ranged anti-tank like Gladiator Lancers, maybe the combo of Hellbrecht and Sword Brethren, or just any army that spams enough firepower to reliably take down Knights and Tougher. You could lose 800 points of your army far too soon. Big and hard to move units like this sometimes only have so much impact on a game due to the enemy just hiding, screening or trying to play ignore it while they try and win the mission against the rest of your army. It could cause problems but maybe they can mitigate it causing 800 points worth of problems. The damage is still quite swingy and is vulnerable to modifiers or being degraded. I feel like this thing is going to devour most of your command points as it just makes sense to spend them on it as opposed to other things in your army. Having said all that though, its max damage combo does seem genuinely terrifying, able to take some serious chunks out of anything it can see within line of sight, never mind if it does get actually close enough to charge something. Not every army is going to be packing the sort of anti-tank that you need to take down a big super unit like this, even in the competitive meta, and some armies just might not be able to take the sheer amount of firepower it can meet out. I feel in general you really want to play it kind of carefully against some armies though, you really can't afford to lose an 800 point model just straight away otherwise you're almost certainly going to lose the game, but at the same time you can't afford for it to be too badly ignored. You need to strike the balance of not just walking it straight up to the enemy eradicators or whatever to blow it up immediately, versus not keeping it back so long that you might as well have brought something else and it hasn't done its job. You need to try and deploy it to try and keep a toe of it in cover if possible, and choosing its movement lanes to get the lines of sight it needs perhaps trying to think about a turn or so ahead to make sure it's going to stay relevant, as well as the damage ones, I certainly wouldn't underestimate the advance and shoot stratagem either. Getting an extra 4 or 5 inches perhaps could be the difference between being able to hit something unexpectedly or not being able to draw a bead to it, and certainly could allow you to deliver it to combat sometimes. Overall seems at least kind of fun to put on the table now, which I'd say it is more so than before. If you're playing 2,000 points, that's another 1,150 points worth of Orc Dread Mob to back it up, so it's certainly going to have some friends along. You will need to try and go at least somewhat heavy on the scoring units, maybe a whole bunch of Gretchen and some Storm Boys to fly around doing secondaries, but I guess beyond that, any other tough stuff that can weather the storm of enemy shooting and divide their anti-tank sort of firepower would probably cause even more problems. I imagine that you'd struggle to take down both this and another 800 or 900 points worth of other Orky Walkers. I suspect that just taking two stompers and two mechs along and doubling down is probably a bad idea, though I must admit that will probably be a hellishly scary kind of list to try and deal with. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the new stomper rules down in the comments below. What do you make of this guy and his damage output in the Dread Mob? Look forward to hearing your takes. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.